So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna take you through the electronic setup of, in this case, a quadcopter, but it applies to any kind of multi-copter um, configuration. Um, I get a lot of questions about how to go through the electronic setup. And mechanically, most people can work out how to bolt the things together, but there are a few tricks as far as doing the electronic setup. So I'm gonna take you through those basic steps. So as my example, I'm using a multi wee copter scarab stealth armor and this is the carbon version and basically i'm going to go through step by step what you need to do as you build it uh, some of the steps you need to do before you actually get to this final constructed stage um, so i'm going to go through all of that um, i'll also go through your transmitter setup and Basically everything you need to do to get the electronic side of it going. First thing I'm gonna do is look at motor direction. Um, each of the motors on any multi-rotor are set to travel in a specific direction. And there's, there'll be a chart for whatever airframe you're building showing which direction each of the motors need to go. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to set the motor direction and then I'm gonna move on to um, the other steps. Okay, so to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the motor, I've got a speed controller, and I have here a servo tester. You can use a receiver to do the same thing, but if you use the receiver, you've gotta use your radio, and you know, it's all a lot of hassle. I have a servo tester, I use it quite a lot. If you don't have one, very handy thing to have, don't cost a lot. Um, and it makes these sorts of steps a lot easier. So what I'm gonna do is, I wanna set this motor to turn in, a, in say a clockwise direction. So what I'm gonna do is plug three wires from the motor into the speed controller, then plug the speed controller into my servo tester. Make sure it is set to the minimum. And then I'm going to power all this up. I've got a little 2S LiPo that I'm using in this case. This motor is designed for 3S but it doesn't matter. I just need to get it going and this particular motor pack I happen to have lying around has the right kind of connector to plug into the speed controller. It just makes things easier. So all right we're powered up. The speed is initialized. We've had our beeps so the, I'm just going to very slowly Turn the servo controller up until the motor just starts moving and look for which direction it's running. Now that is, it's a bit hard to see there, it is running clockwise. Okay, so if I want the motor to go clockwise, I don't have to do anything. But if I wanted it to go counterclockwise, what I need to do is, firstly, I'm going to power down the speedy for safety and I'm going to unplug two of the motor wires and swap that pair of motor wires around. Okay, grab that one and grab that one. Any pair, doesn't matter which pair. Then I power back up and start the motor running. And now it is going counterclockwise. So what you need to do is go around the four motors and make sure each of the four motors is running in the correct direction. I do that with the bottom half of the airframe assembled before I attach the top plate to the airframe and make sure they're all done. As a final step of the process, what I like to do is add to every one of the motor boards a little extra bit of an outside heat shrink once they're all set correctly, and that stops them coming undone. Okay, the next thing I want to do is actually set all the parameters correctly on my speed controller. And if you've bought one of the airframe kits from multi -Wee Copter, you would have also received a programming card, which makes it a hell of a lot easier to set up the ESC, because you don't have to go through all the stick command process. So what I do is, plug the speedy in and you have to do this with all four speed controllers and you have to do it with the motor connected. 
All right. And then we once again power up. And all the LEDs light up on the control board. Now, basically you've got a bunch of parameters there you want to set. All right. They are break, you want off. Battery type we set to lithium, not nickel cadmium. Right. We want the cutoff type to be soft. We want the voltage cutoff to be low. And we want the motor start to be normal. Some people elect to go for a nickel battery setting instead of the lithium because it gives a lower cutoff voltage. Uh, I don't like to take my lipos down that low, so I keep it at a lithium battery type. But that's a personal preference of mine. You can do it every, whatever way you want. Uh, the next parameter after that, now these are set pretty much the same for no matter what. Motor timing has to be set depending on the type of motor you use. Now, um, for the 1175 kV carbon bird motors like you get on the stealth quad that is medium timing if it's the 775 motors that you get on most of the larger airframes from multi wee copter that needs to be set to low so I'm going to set that to low so the first thing I do is there's an up and down arrow here button I click that until I get to the parameter I want to set then I use the left right key to cycle through to where I want it. Now I'm back to low timing. And then I press the OK button. And it'll flash and it'll set. If you don't hit the OK button, it doesn't set that parameter. So if you just unplug power, having changed that, the setting won't stay. If you want to double check your major settings, unplug the power. Then plug the power back in. And the programming card will show you how you've set that up. Okay, now this is actually the 1175 motor, so I'm going to go back through and change that motor timing to mid, hit OK, blue flashes, and that is done. I'm actually going to jump forward a step. Um, and introduce the receiver. Now ideally, or well, what you should do before you do this particular step, which is teach the speed controller the high and low throttle settings from the receiver, you should before you do that, go into the multi wee GUI and set up the centers and endpoints for every channel from your radio into the receiver. Um, after having done that, I'm going to unplug the throttle channel from the um, Paris board that comes from the receiver, and I'm going to then set up the speed controller endpoint. So I'm going to teach it what is on my radio the high throttle position and the low throttle position. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to power up the radio set throttle high and just put that aside for a second okay now multi-way copter have available these things they're a multi-way servo lead this is the four-way which will come with a quadcopter kit they actually go all the way up to eight-way versions of this if you're going to do a big quadcopter and they're extremely handy because what they let you do is set the endpoints or teach the throttle settings to the ESC but all of them at the once so it saves a lot of time and a lot of hassle but more importantly it means they all get set exactly the same which is important if you want a very stable flight performance so normally when I do this step everything's mounted up on the airframe I actually usually have the airframe pretty much assembled when I do this up till now we've done everything before we put the top plate on. I would already have the top plate on when I do this step. So I would plug in 
all of my ESCs, I'm only showing one here, to the multi-way adapter, and I would plug that into the throttle channel of my receiver. Okay, radio is on, throttle radio is on, throttle is full. I now power up all of the ESCs, and again, I'm just using this 2S pack for the purpose of the exercise. By now, I'd have the power loom done, probably using my 3S pack to do so. I get my link LED and I get the tones from the motor. As soon as I get those tones, I want to drop the throttle to zero, and that has just set my throttle. So I've got minimum and I've got maximum throttle learnt from my radio to the ESC. And that step is then done. So I just power it off and we're done. And because we've used this multi-way adapter, we've done all the motors in the one hit. If you don't have this adapter, you have to actually go through and do the whole process. So throttle full up, plug in the throttle channel, power it up, wait for the tones, low volume, low throttle, and you've got to do it four times. This lead just makes the whole process so much simpler and easier, and it's more accurate. So if you don't have one of those, uh, grab one, highly recommend it.